My name is Teresa Beer Larson. I'm talking with Terry Adams on September 28, 2010. Terry, do I have your permission to record you on videotape? You have my full permission. Terry, you have many connections to Ames, too many to talk about in one <laughs> sitting. The theme that I would like to talk about today is the Ames Municipal Band. Okay. Tell me when you first joined the Ames Municipal Band. 1951. And how did that happen? How did you get drawn into the band? Uh, well, fortunately, when I went into junior high, I was ready to put that dumb instrument down and get rid of that dumb stuff. But fortunately, Richard Day was the director of Ames High School and Central Junior High School. And was my band director. The folks insisted I had to do it. And he changed me enough that by my third year in junior high, my ninth grade year, I talked to Dick and got his advice and used my money to buy my clarinet, which I played throughout. And uh, But in 51, uh, back then, the central students in the band, if they were good enough, could be in the high school band. So I had my uniform there. And we had what was called MUNITP, which is Municipal Training Program, and that was where Dick would have some of his students come to the municipal band practice in the basement of the band shell and do rehearsals <coughs> and uh, get our way in. And fortunately, uh, after we did so much of that, if we met the requirements, then we could join the band. So I have a, do have a sheet I'll be giving you that show the, uh, the story that was in the paper of the new, new members of the municipal band. And we'd been playing, but we weren't members initially until we met those requirements, then we became members. So I've been a member full-time since 1951. So actually you started as a fairly young person. Yes. You, and so you had lots of mentors in that band. Oh, yes. My first time in band, I remember uh, I sat, in the, I played my regular clarinet back then, and I sat the 13th chair out of 13 rehearsing. I was sitting right next to a former band director who was using a metal piece in his uh, mouthpiece to help hold his lip in place. So I was, you know, at least under <laughs> playing with somebody else who knew how to do it and I worked my way up ultimately to the first chair and then uh, af after a period of time uh, the director started having me play the bass clarinet with the municipal band. Now I, that was later on uh, mm -hmm. that I did that but I played my clarinet primarily and uh, then I got permission one concert each summer under Dick Day and Milt Trexel to play my soprano sax for one concert only. Then when Homer Gartz took over, he said, there is no such instrument as soprano sax. <laughs> well, then Mike Galimo, uh, Dr. Galimo, came to town as head of the, initially director of the bands at Iowa State. Now he's head of the music department. And I uh, found out and I said, uh, Homer, are you aware that uh, Mike Galimo, the director of bands, plays soprano sax? He says, he does, yeah. I said, that's all this town needs is one. <laughs> <laughs> and our former director of the senior band said, they just invented soprano sax to prove some instruments can never be tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to 1951, which okay. was the first time that you joined the municipal band. Describe for me the first concert. Not necessarily exactly what you played, but what did you wear as a uniform? Can you remember that day? Okay, the initial uniform, well, I won't say the initial uniform of the city band, but the city band uniform back then was very similar to the Ames High School band uniform. So we Ames High School students would wear our, our high school uniform because it would blend in pretty well with the city band uniform. I bet they were hot. Oh yeah. Uh, the, the situation was there, we would take a vote uh, in the summer and it'd say, should we leave our coats on or take them off? All those in favor of the coats on. And Bill Ferguson and I always voted yes to leave the coats on. But uh, what we would do, we'd go out have our seats, we'd stand for the Star Spangled Banner and play it. At the end of that, if it, they vote the coats off, then we'd take our coats off and put them over the back of the seat. Well, then later on, the band got new uniforms. They were, uh, I think they were a tan uniform. I had a photo of the paper of that, also marching down the parade. And now, of course, we're just simply, we wear our own slacks and we have our municipal band t-shirt. So, <laughs> a lot more municipal comfortable. Band on it. Much more comfortable. We don't worry about voting to take a coat off anymore. <laughs> also in 1951, you had um, Richard Day as mm -hmm. the director. And what kind of music did Richard Day like? Well, we just had a municipal band library, and he just pulled the music out of the library all the time. So it, 
varied from concert to concert, but uh, over a period of a few years, uh, back then I might p point out, we gave, when initially we joined, we gave concerts June, July, and August every summer. And we rehearsed year-round except for September. Now we did get September off. So, uh, but we, the city band also back then would be called on to play at other special occasions. Uh, I remember when the new garbage facility went out there south of the tracks east of Duff. We ended up playing a concert in there and pointed that music <laughs> echo in that building. <laughs> so, I can uh, hear that now. <laughs> municipal band doesn't do that anymore now. We just simply play our two concerts and uh, of course March and Memorial Day and uh, that's about it. In addition to the clarinetists that were mentors for you in 1951, were there other musicians that inspired you in municipal band? Were there other characters that uh, were fun to know? Oh, uh, Lou Doggett, I think, was a longtime member of the band. He was, I believe, a percussionist. And uh, I had a bunch of classmates who went in the same time I did, but no one particular one. Uh, when I did get up to the first stand, uh, Carla Lechner, Lechner Engineering Building still exists on Fifth Street there, and that was her father. Carla Lechner was the first chair. Carol Wells, who was the daughter of Ken Wells, the Ames coach, was the second chair, and I was the third chair. Three chairs of us playing in the, uh, on the one stand. And since I was the third chair, it was my job to go up and turn the music, mm -hmm. except one concert. Carla, or Carol told me that Carla would be turning the music and not to say anything. I said, what's going on? Well, she had just gotten engaged and she wanted to turn the music to show her diamond ring off. <laughs> <laughs> I think band uh, brings out that kind of story. Oh, yeah. Well, the, uh, the other band member, not quite as long as I am, but close to it, is Bill Ferguson. Mm -hmm. He ended up marrying my cousin, second or third cousin, and, uh, and uh, we've known each other since mm -hmm. back in the high school days, of course, and played all the way through, so... Well, the um, band concerts, in addition to having great music from band members such as yourself, there were always um, guest artists that would oh, come yes. in and sing. And of, of course, of note more recently is Simon Estes. But throughout the years, have there been other guest artists that you remember that it was a lot of fun to accompany them or be a part of their um, experience? Well, I can't come up with any right offhand. Oh, that's all right. about that. Uh... I should, but uh, okay. That, do enough no, no concerts, you, it kind of goes out. You know, once you get one concert done, you get into the next one. So, mm -hmm. you have played several instruments. You've alluded to the fact that you've um, played um, several instruments. Was that because you just like to explore different kinds of instruments, or how did that come about? Well, growing up, I had. The alto sax in the house, that was my dad's, he, uh, it's 95 years old, or going on 96 now, I guess. He played alto sax, and, uh, but he never played it that I could hear it, so I, I don't know. I think he quit it maybe his senior year, or maybe he played it through graduation, I don't know. He never told me specifically. But uh, I, when I got into grade school, uh, the folks borrowed a metal clarinet from my cousin so that I could start in fifth grade, you know, we had... String started in fourth grade, but the winds didn't start until fifth grade. So I started off in the clarinet, had the elbow sax. In junior high, I played both of them, and uh, Dick Day did have me play Cherry Berry Bin solo on the alto sax, so I, I did go back and forth on that some. And, and for people who might not know that, that is a noteworthy solo for that instrument. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I think so. Yeah. And uh, so I actually, uh, in the high school, I played... Pretty well, the uh, clarinet was it, and that, as I say, my freshman year, I used uh, Dick Day's advice. And when I was wanting to put the dumb instrument down going to, into junior high, and then they played it under Dick Day's advice, I bought the clarinet I did and played that. But in uh, or he had me playing in band and orchestra, but in orchestra, he had me playing bass clarinet. They needed that part filled, and so I did the bass clarinet, which is how I got started on that. And uh, the soprano sax, I just simply saw an Ishbox and bought for the fun of it. <laughs> and uh, back when we played only city band library music and it was stored in the basement of the band shell, I, going through it I discovered they had a soprano sax bar so I started taking it out. So I was allowed to play it one concert each summer. So I did get my soprano sax in once. Does the music library still exist? 
probably does, but uh, we, but under Dr. Glimo, we're using Iowa State University Library, so it's quite a wide selection. It's, uh, you know, we get a lot more in there now, so that's kind of great to do. You do get to play different kind of music. I'm sure back in the 1950s, it was pretty exclusively marches in 4-4 time and uh, maybe a hymn or two. And... Well, no, we played a variety of music. It wasn't mm -hmm. just marches. We, we would open with a march and uh, close with a march. And, of course, the last concert, we always closed with Old Lang Syne but, and the hymn at the end, so mm -hmm. just before the uh, final march. So, But we did a variety of things. They weren't all marches, no. Mm -hmm. Has the attendance always been good at band concerts? I think so. Uh, one time, uh, I think it was under Milt Trexel, we were playing and was sprinkling some, and, and people were still sitting there, and Milt says, well, we'll just play until they leave. Finally, he said, we got to stop and let them get into some shelter, because people were sitting <laughs> out there. It wasn't heavy rain, but it was raining, and they were sitting out there, some of them. Now, not a big crowd, of course, in that, listening to the concert. So um, now, that's a loyal. That's a loyal audience. Oh, yeah. Now we, uh, if there's if there's rain, we go out. We we still have to show up and go out. And if it's raining, then we just simply announce that it's been called off. Mm -hmm. So now the people have to sit through the rain anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then something else has changed over the years. When I uh, before I ever joined the band, I would get over to the band shell park, pedal my bike over there, and uh, listen to the concerts myself. I love doing that. Two things they had then they don't do anymore. One of them, halfway through the concert, the band would leave the stage, they'd wheel the piano on, and uh, the dance teacher would come in and start playing music, and her girls would come out and dance along the front of the stage for about 10 minutes, and they'd leave, and then we'd get back, the band would go back on and play again. The other thing, there would be a drop down from the top of the band shell, and they would show some words on it, and there'd be a sing-along. They'd, they'd <laughs> play one song, and you could sing along with it. Now, they haven't done that. I don't think they've done that since I joined the band, so it was before I was in the band. But uh, So I enjoyed going there before I ever joined the band. So it has It is such a summer tradition in Ames. I mean, it's just a regular part of many people's Thursday night experience. But has it ever been on different nights? Uh... Not remember? since I've been in. <laughs> and you've been in a long time. Oh, yeah. Only, only uh, 59 years. Mm -hmm. Just finished my 59th year with it, so. That is significant. That is a, a rich music history that you have. <laughs> of 59 years of municipal band. My wife's not fully appreciative of my motto. I say there's band and there's the rest of life. <laughs> <laughs> you alluded to the fact that the band used to play at other venues other than mm -hmm. the band shell. What were some of the other places where you've played? Well, of course, we go over to Boone and uh, the Boone Band Festival over there now, and we enjoy doing that. And we are the only band besides Boone that's been there since they started, every concert since they've started. Um, well, I mentioned playing in the uh, garbage building <laughs> when they first put it up, and uh, um, we've gone out and played... Uh, well, we played do Fourth of July. We used to do Fourth of July concerts out for the for the fireworks there out there uh, by the Iowa State Center. So mm -hmm. I don't think they do that anymore. So, but we we did do that. So other venues did the municipal band. I think you said you marched once. Do you you don't march anymore? We we march on Memorial Day. Right. And the parade. We uh, well, they have marched on the Fourth of July parade. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think we marched the Fourth of July. So. This is just going to be a small little digression for the municipal band for just a second, okay. but that relates to being in Ames, Iowa. Terry Adams is a graduate of the University of Iowa. Right. <laughs> and I see Terry Adams in the Iowa State University alumni band occasionally. How did that happen? <laughs> How does a Hawkeye get onto a cyclone band? Okay, back in our municipal band days... The Iowa State band, in my earlier days, when I was still in high school, the Iowa State band would play a concert on the west side of the Memorial Union every Wednesday night in June. <clears throat> and Frank Pearsall would come to the city band and ask for volunteers to help fill in the uh, Iowa State band. And Bill Ferguson and I were two of the volunteers who went in there. So uh, when Ken Anderson, who was an Iowa State alum, band alum, found out about that, he talked to the director at the time, and yes, I could be part of the alumni band because I played in the Iowa State band, just not the uh, during the regular school, school year, but in the summer. 
And Bill Ferguson, uh, just to comment on him, went to Iowa State, <clears throat> so he got his music all ready for the audition and worked hard to work it up, went in to play, and uh, when it was his turn, he went in, pulled his trumpet out, got his music ready, and Parasol says, just go ahead and leave. I've already heard you play. You're in, Bill. So <laughs> Bill got in without even having to try. The reason I went to Iowa U, or State University of Iowa back then, was I was into liberal arts. That was my field. And Iowa State was pretty much still a Bachelor of Science degree. So I went to the University of Iowa, State University of Iowa, because of that. Two advantages of going there. Two free trips to the Rose Bowl, my sophomore year and my senior year. I said that my sophomore year, of course, I, we used to go out, my dad would always watch everything at Iowa State. My sophomore year, the crowd went wild with the last victory. I thought, well, it's another victory. It's the end of the season. What's the big cheer? Well, they won the Big Ten, so we got our trip to the Rose Bowl. And, uh, <laughs> so you've marched to the Rose Bowl parade. Yeah, twice. And a uh, first trip out there, Chevrolet sponsored us. We rode out with Union Pacific and Southern Pacific. And they, of course, came back the same way. While going out there, we would stop every so often, getting out far west and do little performances somewhere along the line and then coming back somewhat the same thing. My senior year was the second time they went to the Rose Bowl and the Santa Fe sponsored us that time and uh, went out and coming back, the Santa Fe stopped, backed us in, and we had our own private tour of the Grand Canyon. Now that's, yeah, that's a mighty nice thing to have. The other thing, of course, back then, the... Uh, University bands were all male, except for the twirlers, and we had the uh, Highlanders, all female. So we had the diesels, then we had the baggage cars with our luggage in it, and our instruments, and the bagpipes, and then we had the band members, and then the tail end were the uh, Highlanders. Well, then we'd get the announcement, get your uniforms on, we're getting ready to stop and perform, so we'd start getting dressed. The girls have to go through and get their bagpipes and come back, so we had to watch out for that situation. <laughs> and the, uh, my wife's one drawback to my having done that, uh, on the, uh, my senior year, I stopped and we went to the dining car to eat and I looked at the menu and uh, saw something I didn't recognize and I thought, well, I'm going to try that for breakfast. So I had scrambled eggs and kippers and loved them. So I, uh, once I'm married, I would get a can of kippers and open it up. My wife said, you can't open those in the summer, it's too hot and humid. We can't open them, get rid of the smell. You can't do it in the winter, it's too cold to open the windows and get rid of the smell. <laughs> she didn't care for kippers, I love the taste, but they probably do have an aroma. But, <clears throat> but thanks to a band experience, you got a chance to try them. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, so I was in the Iowa State Band prior to going to college, four years in the University of Iowa Band, then I went to University of Minnesota for a mortuary science degree, and I was in the University of Minnesota Band, I joined that because they were forecast to win the Big Ten that year, and I thought a third trip to the Rose Bowl would be great. They didn't win the Big Ten. I'm sorry you didn't get that third trip. <laughs> no. So I didn't, I didn't play my second year then, but uh, uh, frankly, I've, I've enjoyed... Uh, I've, well, I remember one year, my son lives in Iowa City, and uh, his wife was not big on sports, but uh, I joined the alumni band that year. I played with the Iowa, University of Iowa alumni band that year, so he had her come to the game, and... Uh, we marched and Iowa won. They'd been having a bit of a tough time. So my son said, well, the coach has it set. You're supposed to be a permanent member of the band and he's going to have a seat for my wife to sit there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of fun to do that. So I'd, I'd like to do it more, but it just doesn't, we're a busy schedule now. It's kind of hard to work that out anymore to mm -hmm. get in. So it's, I'm right here in town. It's easier to play with the Iowa State alumni band. Tell me a little bit about the directors that you've mm -hmm. um, performed under. Um, are there ones that stand out for you, and what, what were their attributes that you liked or, or maybe even gave you a giggle or maybe you didn't like? <laughs> well, Dick Day, of course, was a tremendous director. He's the guy that kept me going in music, and I really appreciate that. And when uh, Dick finally retired, then Milt Trexel, who was, had been his assistant and uh, took over the high school band, he took over the municipal band. And uh, then when Milt retired, Homer Gartz took over, and... Uh, uh, Homer's the one that said, there is no such instrument as soprano sax. So that took care of my ever playing that. Our <laughs> senior band director, earlier senior band director, not the current one, made the comment, they just invented the soprano sax to prove some instruments could never be tuned. <laughs> so I didn't play under Homer at all, of course, and uh, I haven't even tried it under Mike Galimo because I'm playing <laughs> bass clarinet now full-time, so that, that keeps me going. So I've been under four directors, and uh, 
was there was there a style of the directors that you liked? Was there something about the directors one over another that impressed you, or or you? Well, remember? I just I just admired Dick Day. He's the one to turn me around from mm -hmm. can I get rid of this dumb thing to buying my <laughs> own clarinet and playing. So I've always admired him and and the way he directed things and and encouraged me. Mm -hmm. uh, Milk Trexel was a nice guy. He wasn't a Dick Day, but that's mm -hmm. just me kind of comparison. And uh, frankly, uh, under Homer, I only have City Band there. That's the only thing there. And under Mike Galimo, it's just it's tremendous there that what he has us doing. So he gets so, the best out of it. So you're really enjoying the uh, musicality and oh, yes. the breadth of experience of the. Mm -hmm. And you know that's saying something. If you've been a band member almost 60 years, I mean coming <laughs> up 59 years, then uh, that's high praise for him. Oh yeah. That's right. Well, are there any other memories about Municipal Band that you'd like to tell me about that I haven't asked you about? Oh, can't think of any, I think. Okay. So, um, any particular uh, shenanigans? Were there any rituals or did you initiate new band members in any way? <laughs> Or they were just welcomed with open arms? I uh, just welcomed them. They uh -huh. were always welcome in, so. Uh -huh. And is it pretty hard to get into municipal band? Well, it is now. I don't think uh, high school students would get in anymore. Of course, we don't have a high school director, so we can't call them that. But uh, we, have a, we have a pretty steady cast there. So uh, I know there are people who are interested, and they turn their name in. And that way, Mike has their name. And if he needs somebody, then he can call them in to fill in. Mm -hmm. I had to miss one concert, so he had somebody fill in a bass clarinet for me. Yeah, you don't want to be gone very much if you know uh, there's people waiting in the wings. You want to yeah. hold your seat. <laughs> well, by, by getting rid of the August concert, I keep telling my wife we should do everything in August. <laughs> but she, uh, we always, they always plan something in July, so I miss one concert there. So yeah, hate to do that. <laughs> I really appreciate you talking with me. I appreciate the memories that you shared. And it's um, quite a gift to Ames, all yeah. your years of music. Well, it used to be way back when the municipal band was its own organization and we had our own minutes and everything else. I was the secretary of the band for a while. We'd have meetings and uh, keep track of those things. And then we just were now a part of the city. We don't worry about meetings anymore. We don't uh, have to vote on who's going to come in or out of the band. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've gotten rid of that aspect. I didn't mention that earlier. I should have. Oh, well, let's talk about that. How did that work? Well, we just, uh, we had officers and uh, uh, they just, they have a meeting every so often to make decisions on things. Well, that organization as such doesn't exist anymore, so mm -hmm. that, that's, I don't know when that dissolved. But <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it's running okay without it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, Terry Adams, I thank you very much for sharing your memories and thank you for your uh, gift of music to Abe. Well, thank I appreciate you. it. Well, I'll play as long as they'll let me. <laughs> I'm talking with Terry Adams about his um, instruments. Show me the first one, that, or the oldest one that you'd like to show me. The oldest one. Okay. <laughs> I'm not getting the thing caught. This is the Aldo Sax, 96 years old. And where did this alto sax come from? Uh, my dad played it. And did you play it in the municipal band? I did on occasion. You know, I'm gonna ask, you know I'm gonna ask you to play and I haven't given you a chance to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> More soap to read. Okay. <laughs> song that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I actually know that one. <laughs> I I could have sung along with it. <laughs>
Oh, I still remember it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't care about the fame of <laughs> Old Marshall Town. Town their feats of Oski High. And Grinnell is the team that we, we love, love to beat. beat. And the same goes for Old Boone High. Yay, team. Oh, don't send your poor boy to Newton. I'd rather, see, rather see, see him die. die. Send your boy to AHS. It's the bestest of the best. Lend an ear, give a cheer for Old Lakes High School. <laughs> you can see why I play an instrument but don't sing the chorus. <laughs> but a 96 year old alto sax. Yep. That so called doesn't exist. What? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't know why anything's doing that, so I'll think I'll quit playing it right That's now. That's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> we just set that one down. I noticed that one had something on the front. Could you show me what's on the front? Yep. George, after I bought this my freshman year, George Grooms, a collegiate manufacturing company, my uncle's company, burned my name and address into it, right into the leather to keep it safe. <laughs> so, uh, trouble is, I haven't lived there for uh, 45 <laughs> years. But <laughs> I see. Yeah, 45 years. Mm -hmm. Now, is this the one that you bought with your own money? That this is the one I bought Dick, my own money. Dick, Dick Day encouraged you to buy? Uh, he didn't encourage me. I just simply wanted to buy it. And oh, uh, he encouraged you advice. to stay in music. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And that's um, purchased at the uh, many longtime members of Ames will remember Eshbox on Main Street. Yep. Good old Eshbox music. Which is now the pumpkin patch, I think. Mm -hmm. no, I don't have to read wet enough. Okay, that's fine. That's all right. Yeah, we'll show the last one. Okay. I really didn't give you an opportunity. It's not fair to tell a musician to oh, play on the spot, by the way. Open this up. <laughs> And this is what you're playing, um, this is what municipal, I'm playing band, right? municipal band, right? Uh -huh. And I bought this used from the fellow that owned it. He uh, played it for a while in our church band, and he just got to the point he wasn't able to do it. So this is what I now play with the uh, mm -hmm. municipal band. Bass clarinet. <laughs> and also, there's a spike there that I don't use on my carpet. My wife would. song to play in Ames. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the uh, miniature concert so that we could see the instruments that you've played in the municipal band. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. From the number one organization in Ames, Ames Historic Society. <laughs>
we're um, talking again with Terry Adams, and he has his clarinet out. Um, let's talk about some, some music you've lis listened to as a child. Okay, my uh, first record I ever listened to was back in the old 78 RPM days, and uh, my grandparents wind up Victrola over in Boone, and uh, my favorite song there was the Bear Barrel Polka. Okay, that's, that's good enough. <laughs>